to some movies, a list of movies. I, I just want to say really quickly, right now my wife is live texting me the Tom Cruise stunt that he is doing for the the Paris Olympics closing ceremony. Oh yeah, what's he doing? Well, so far, he has. Um, let's see. He took the Olympic flag off on a motorcycle mm-hmm. through the streets of Paris. Uh, he rode that motorcycle onto an airplane, and I believe he is now jumping out of said airplane. Is this a promo for the second half of Dead Reckoning, or what? What's he doing here? Yeah, I, I think. It, I mean, I, I yes, I'm sure this is a promo for Mission Impossible. Also, with the next Olympics being in la i think he's delivering the flag from paris to la this is i mean she said this is all pre-recorded obviously it's not happening live but yeah pre-recorded is so annoying i know i know so yes yes this is a she says it's very clever though this is this seems like it's a promo for dead reckoning slash you know a celebration of la hollywood gotcha well i mean uh we'll see i guess we'll watch it on replay just like everybody else is watching it live on replay (laughs) Yes. All right, let's get into our list for this week. This list is a list of the top 10 Matt Damon performances. Let's rank some movies. Uh, which is not kind of how I made my list, but I, I think I'm going to adjust it on the fly to kind of match you, you guys. Um, okay. What did you guys take into account when making your top 10 Matt Damon performances list? I mean, for I had me... A couple- yeah, go ahead, Jack. Uh, okay. I had a couple of rules for myself, but Matt Damon is one of, if not my favorite actor. I just really enjoy him on screen. I think he's very charismatic and fun. He doesn't take himself seriously. You know, like he he's willing to make fun of himself and laugh at himself. And there's a lot of prima donnas, you know, in, in Hollywood. And I just feel like he's not one of them. I feel like he's just willing to, like, you know, be the butt of jokes. And that's fine. And I, I appreciate that about him. Um, one thing that I did on my list is I combined fr- uh, franchises into a single slot. Okay. So I'm not here to parse the different born movies and which one he gave a better performance and a worse performance. Um, he plays a character, so I'm going with the franchise. So that, that's the big one. And then I just ranked him by how um, good I thought his performance was, not necessarily how good I thought the movie as a whole was. So sometimes he has a bigger part, sometimes a smaller part. Nice. Kyle? Uh, yeah, I'm very similar. Um, I am not ranking individual movies, so I'm taking performances like like Bourne, like Ocean's Eleven, etc. Um, and but really, I'm looking at the performance. So if he's if he's the main character in the movie versus if he has a very small part, I see that that's equal for me. It's whichever performance I like more. So I'm not taking screen time into account. I'm not doing like Thor cameos, but you know, if it's if, if if he actually has like a at least a part in the movie, I took it into my account for this list. Um, for me, Matt Damon is not my most watched actor. I think he's like my second or third most watched actor. Um, and yeah, like I feel like I've kind of grown up with him. Like he's sort of when I started watching more serious movies, he started popping into those. And then as I've watched more movies and become more of a film nerd, he's always sort of been there along the way. So I think you know his. His career started to take off just as my movie watching took off. And I don't know. I, I feel like I've we've grown together. Nice. I've, I've seen 50. I've seen 46 Matt Damon movies, oh, by the way. Wow. I don't even I've know seen how many 35. Movies. And if you include cameos and things, it's like probably f- close to 40. Okay. I don't know how many I've seen, but I will figure it out. Um, Matt Damon in general, I enjoy as an actor. I also feel like I've grown up with him, even though I'm like six years older than you, Kyle, five or six years, um, because he's basically my sister's age. He's like in his mid- He's 53. 53. So early to mid fifties. Um, Born in 1970. Which makes sense. So he's maybe actually a few years older than my older sister. But- Do you know Ben Affleck is two years younger than him? Yeah. Ben Affleck's the young one. Yeah. Well, the Casey's obviously the youngest of the three of them. Sure. Uh, my list was originally made as a top 10 Matt Damon movies list, uh, not necessarily performances. So maybe there might be some difference had I looked at it that way. But it's basically like my favorite movies that have Matt Damon in it that I would consider like a Matt Damon movie. So uh, I think it'll work fine for performances as well. Is ready to jump into this? Yeah, let's go. 
Okay. I'll go first. Why not? Uh, my number 10 is a movie probably not going to make y'all's list from 2013 titled Elysium. Elysium? I like Elysium. Okay. Elysium. <laughs> Elysium. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I like this movie. It's a sci-fi. <laughs> it's a sci-fi movie that um has a realistic presentation, I would say. Um, maybe not in the plotting of the movie, but the visuals of the movie, thanks to director Neil Blomkamp. I like most of Neil Blomkamp's movies, even though maybe District Nine is the only one that's not messy. The other ones are pretty messy. Um, but Messy in an interesting way uh, for my money. And uh, I also like Charlotte Copley in this movie. Uh, Matt Damon's kind of a blank slate, but he's in it quite a bit. And um, and I liked seeing him chew scenery as kind of like the relatively quiet, stoic. I think he's a father in that movie. It's been a while since I've seen it. Um, and... Uh, I like the movie in general, and I like the performance from Matt Damon enough to put it on my as my number ten. Nice, nice. I'll go uh, next. My number ten or, is a cameo. All right, Zach, go next. Interstellar. See, now it's a spoiler. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I liked his cameo in this because it was subversive. You weren't expecting it. Mm -hmm. and um he played the role well and again a lot of like hollywood stars don't want to be the bad guy you know like the character actors want to be the bad guy and the star wants to be the hero and matt damon's okay with being the bad guy and uh i liked his little performance in this movie nice nice uh, my number 10 is the character of Linus from the Oceans movies. Uh, so Matt Damon is in Oceans 11, 12, and 13. He plays a pickpocket. And I would say I like the performance, but I don't think he necessarily stands out from the other 11 cast members. I think there's bigger personalities in the Oceans movies. But I like him as kind of the, he's kind of, I guess, the mousy one of the group is the best way to describe him. And I think he sort of fits in well with letting some of the bigger personalities take over this uh, ensemble heist movie. Nice. My number nine is a movie that I like a lot and would rank much higher on other lists, but it's at number nine on this one. It's 1998 Saving Private Ryan from Steven Spielberg. Uh, not really a movie I think of Matt Damon first on when I think about this movie, just because... Spoiler alert, he's not in it till the back third or so. And on top of that, his character is kind of intentionally written to be an everyman kind of normal dude. Uh, not much special about him. That's kind of the point of the shape of that movie. At least the plot of it is they're going in to save Private Ryan. Uh, a.k.a. Matt Damon's character and um, why it's so important to save this one person. And then when they finally find him, he's just like a normal guy, just like all the other soldiers. And uh, it makes for um, a pretty straightforward performance from Matt Damon. Like the movie asks that of him and he delivers. Uh, but also you. The movie doesn't necessarily justify all the effort to save him, but he's likable enough in his normal guyness that you go along with the rest of the movie. And uh, that's probably baked more into the script than his performance itself, but uh, combined pretty effective for a movie that kind of rests on all that coming around in the end. So my number nine, Saving Private Ryan. Cool. My number nine is Mark Watney from The Martian. I felt like this role had a very specific thing it needed to do. And Matt Damon filled that a hundred percent, right? He had to be the um, scientist that was going to figure it out and, you know, be confident, um, experimental and adventurous. And he just, he hit that note. Perfect. Like what the movie needed him to be. He was perfect at. 
I'm not saying like other actors couldn't have done that, but he did it perfect. So um, good for him. Mark Watney. Nice. My number nine is Loki from Dogma. Dogma is a Kevin Smith movie with um, Jalen Silent Bob as kind of playing the Jalen Silent Bob characters who get caught up in a biblical story about angels and demons on Earth and trying to save God it's from these two fallen angels played by Matt Aff- by Ben Affleck and Matt Damon. Matt Damon's playing Loki, um, and yeah, I mean Matt Damon, he's this is one of the few times you see him playing evil. Like he's usually the good guy in movies mm-hmm. or if he's or a neutral person in the movies. Um, very, very rarely is he the villain and he's definitely not the most villainous of the two uh, uh, angel or demons in dogma, but you get, you get to see him like have a little bit of an evil streak and go into boardrooms and intimidate people and shoot guns. And it's a lot of things we don't normally see from a Matt Damon performance. Um, and I always think of this movie as being a Jay and Silent Bob movie. I'm looking at the poster right now, and they have Matt Damon and Ben Affleck front and center on that poster. So maybe because they were the big names, that's why they put them up there. But to me, this is more of Jay and Silent Bob's story and Linda, whatever her name is, Fiorentini, instead of Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. Nice. My number eight is Ocean's Eleven from 2001. And, um, you know, he's one of uh, 11 stars in this movie. And so he gets uh, a little more than most people get as far as screen time. I'd say he's probably third build, maybe, or fourth. What would you say? Like George Clooney I mean, and maybe Brad Pitt. I think and he's Andy third. Garcia above him. No, well, I Julie think Roberts. He's... Oh, yeah, fourth. Build. Yeah, at least fourth, maybe fifth. Okay. Uh, anyway, he's in the movie. He contributes to the movie. He's uh, good in the movie. I don't really remember what his like superpower was. Um, he's a pickpocket. He, he, pick pick that's what it was. That's right. I need to rewatch all the Oceans movies. I'm kind of waiting till I can get a good deal on a 4K set. But right. I watched Oceans 8 literally last night. And um, I remember reviewing it with Zach, right? Didn't we review that, Zach, mm-hmm. back in the yeah. day? And we were kind of nice to it. And it was fine, but man, that they, they, uh, they didn't give much, they didn't give the actors much to do in that movie. Like I remember the acting being fine and it, you know, whatever it was a g- group of hi- people doing a heist, but the heist itself was just so, I don't know, uninteresting. Um, hopefully they'll do another one at some point with a better script. Also, they like, why didn't they get David Holmes to do the music? Like he did the music in the other three and oh, yeah. not have him do oceans eight. It just felt like a bad impression of a David Holmes uh, score. But anyway, my number eight, I'm looking at oceans 11 on letterbox mm-hmm. and he is second build in the cast wow. on the poster. I would say he's third most prominent ahead of Andy Garcia and Julia Roberts. Yeah. I mean, Julia Roberts role is kind of small in that movie, isn't it? It is, but was she a bigger name in 2001 than Matt Damon? I'm asking. I don't Probably. Know I mean, Ocean's Eleven was pre-Born, right? Uh, it could have been the same year as Born. Yeah, I mean, that feels like the first movie where the Matt Damon movie was born. <laughs> no pun intended. Born was 2002, so it was a year before, yes. Yeah. Before that, he was in indie movies, indie dramas that were good, certainly. But um, wasn't until Born where you're like, I'm going to this movie because I want to see Matt Damon <laughs> yeah. type of thing. Zach? Uh, my number eight is Jerry in the 2002 movie Jerry, spelled G-E-R-R-Y. Um, this is another Matt Damon, Casey Affleck film. This one directed by Gus Van Sant. And I like this movie way more than it appears on my list. Um, I like it more than other movies on my list. But uh, his performance is is um, is really good. It's just I think some other performances are better. Um, this is a very sparse movie. Uh, it is uh, shot with Casey Affleck and, and Matt Damon lost in the desert. And 
at first they're just kind of joking around and then as they realize it gets more and more serious they get more and more um quiet and uh serious themselves and and um and the movie is is very content to have five minute long take just following them walking uh so you kind of feel lost in the desert with them um there's a ton of improv in it and I thought that both of them did an awesome job. I mean, they it's just them in a desert, so they have to carry it 100% on the quality of their performance. And for me, totally did. So I really enjoyed this one a lot. Nice. That movie will not make my top 10. <laughs> I'm glad it made yours. Uh, my number eight is 2006's The Departed, or as my relatives on the East Coast say, The Departed. This is the Martin Scorsese movie. Uh, this is a remake of Infernal Affairs, which is a, a Hong Kong production. Uh, this movie is about a cop who infiltrates the Irish mob, the Irish mafia, and tr- kind of works through the ranks of them to get to the 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 I don't know the, the head kingpin, the Don, whatever you want to call him. At the same time, one of the mafia members has infiltrated the police and is also working his way up to the chief. And this movie kind of follows these two characters as they are working the way their way through these competing organizations as moles for each one. And in this case, you have Matt Damon who's playing the ma- the uh, mafia member who is infiltrating the ca- the police force. And again, this is another performance where Matt Damon's playing the bad guy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, even though he's cosplaying as the good guy, he is the bad guy. And they got Leo De- Leonardo DiCaprio, who's the good guy, cosplaying as the bad guy. So. It's kind of an interesting dual performance from both of them. And I do enjoy Matt Damon in this. I need to see this again, though. It's probably been almost 20 years since I've seen The Departed. Yeah, it's a good one. It's a good, it's a fun one to rewatch, too. There's enough twists and turns that you may have forgotten a thing here or there. Right. And and I'll say I like this movie better than the original, The Infernal Affairs. Nice. Well, I've never seen Infernal Affairs, but I like The Departed a little more than Kyle because it's my number seven and I have nothing to add. Zach? Yeah. <laughs> well, my number seven is Tom Ripley in The Talented Mr. Ripley. And this is where he plays uh, a manipulative kind of uh, con man in order to worm his way into um, the lives of people that are above his station. And he just plays such a good little weasel worm kind of character. And uh, I really like the performance. It's a very young Matt Damon, but I really like that performance. My number seven is maybe not the first movie you think of when you think of Matt Damon. But for me, when I think of Matt Damon performances, this always comes to mind. And that is his role as Donnie in Eurotrip from 2004. Um, he, I would say this is a cameo. I was going to say, I, what happened to no cameos on my <laughs> list? <laughs> the the only reason I included this as a, I, I included this one because it's a cameo, but it is such a fun and standout portion of the movie. And his role is kind of what kicks off the entire plot of Eurotrip. So Eurotrip is about a, uh, I, I think it's a kid who just graduated from high school um, who will be entering college. And he decides to go to Europe with his friends on a road trip. It's it's a road trip movie, right? Even has the uh, exact same font as road trip. I think it's of the same production. What gets him to go is he learns that his uh, girlfriend, Fiona, has been cheating on him with this bad boy named Donnie, played by Matt Damon. And at a party, Donnie sings a song called Scotty Doesn't Know, which is about him and Fiona cheating on Scotty behind his back. And Matt Damon is there. He's bald. He's got like head tattoos, facial piercings. He's making crazy faces as he's singing the song. And it's just such a a fun performance from him. And again, this is sort of we're talking like Matt Damon, 2001. That's when he did um, or sorry, 2002. He did Born Identity like he had just broken out. And now here's this guy who's maybe on this huge trajectory in his career doing a silly cameo in Euro Trip. I have no idea how he got in this movie. <laughs> but for me, like just he gives it all for like the two minutes he's on screen. Um, and he lip syncs sky doesn't know very well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's gotta be some kind of connection. He was doing a favor or somebody 
somewhere. He must have been. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a fun little performance. I, I like Euro Trip. I don't think people need to rush out and see it. Um, it's definitely like a favorite of my wife and I as we, we uh, reference it a lot. But you can at least go on YouTube and watch uh, Matt Damon sing Sky Doesn't Know. My number six is the aforementioned Jerry, uh, which is this the. OK, so they did the oceans. They were co-starred in the oceans movies, but short of the instigator. Is Jerry the only other K Casey Affleck, Matt Damon movie? And let me think. I can't think of another um, one. Is Casey Affleck an heir? Mm. I don't think so. It's Casey Affleck and Chasing Amy. I mean, he may have been in Chasing Amy, but I don't think of that as being like a Matt Damon, Casey Affleck. Collab. I mean, Casey Affleck's in Goodwill Hunting. That's right. True. But I mean, I, I, I think, but like, I think about at least Oceans, like there's collaboration between Matt Damon and Casey Affleck. Do they ever have a conversation? I don't remember. Are we giving them like, like it's just like the Casey Affleck Bechtel test? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just trying to think of movies where they're, where you would remember that they were in the movie together. You know what I mean? Like they've had some sure. kind of interaction or. Right. I think Goodwill like Hunting, that. Jerry, and Instigators. Instigators. Yeah. Jerry's really good, though. And I know there's a lot of people who listen to this podcast regularly who have listened for years. And if you haven't seen Jerry yet, shame on you. Go watch it. My number six. <laughs> wow. I, down. Uh, and our number six is Colin Sullivan in The Departed. I thought he's really funny in this movie. I like I like when he plays this kind of character, the yeah, the confident, funny kind of guy. Sure. I like it. All right. My number six is Leslie Groves in Oppenheimer. Um, I don't need to talk a lot about Oppenheimer. Everyone I think knows about this movie. It's about the bomb and the man <laughs> who made it. Um, but Matt Damon plays the I don't know if he's the colonel, the general. He's kind of the military advisor and leader of the entire manhattan project um and i just think he brings maybe it's best to say some levity to this movie and to the people he's around because like it's a very serious movie it's about you know oppenheimer is portrayed as a rather serious person he has humor he's, he's not a humorless character but what he's doing is very serious work and you know it's all in this kind of theoretical feel that no one's ever tested before and then you've got Matt Damon's, you know, military character who's a little, a little bit more grounded and kind of asking maybe the simpler questions, not that they're unimportant, but like maybe more like questions that everyone would care about and not at such the molecular level. And it adds a little lightness to what is a, a heavy movie at times. So I appreciated both his character and his performance in Oppenheimer. Nice. Or maybe he's asking the bigger questions is the better way to say it. I don't really remember him in that movie, but yeah. I didn't love Oppenheimer either, like other people did. Uh, He's like the military liaison. Yeah, I mean, I generally I remember his him from more from the trailer than the actual movie for some reason. <laughs> sure. Uh, my number five is the Born Identity, the first in the Born series. Another movie directed by Doug Liman, same director as Instigators, uh, which just goes to show. How far they've fallen when working together? I don't know. <laughs> uh, Born Identity is great. At the at the time, I never I hadn't considered Matt Damon an action star certainly, uh, and here he was starring in his own action movie, and it was unique. It it uh, had all the action movie tropes, and yet had a an interesting angle on your spy character and an interesting visual style, an interesting depiction of action that got a little copied too much throughout the the aughts for sure but this was kind of the first movie to kind of do the shaky cam action type stuff and um forever made me question the efficacy of uh, a pen in a fist fight for sure um hmm. it's a good one born identity my number five is mike mcdermott in rounders um, this is, I really like rounders a lot. It's the quintessential poker movie. And, uh, he plays a guy that's just incredibly good at poker and his friend kind of gets him deeper and deeper, 
uh, in trouble with the wrong people and he has to get out of it with poker. And um, it's one of my favorite character tropes of just someone who's incredibly good at something. And uh, that's something good. Uh, that's something that uh, Matt Damon does really well. So I enjoy rounders quite a bit. And it's my number five. Quite a bit refers to a significant amount. <laughs> so far behind. <laughs> Gotta be faster than that, man. Hey, I waited for my, a moment. <laughs> If we ever do a list of like our top 10 favorite movie accents, John Malkovich from Rounders is definitely making that list. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My number five is the aforementioned Private Ryan from Saving Private Ryan. Um, it's not a spoiler to say that Matt Damon is Private Ryan. Uh, but yeah, I, I agree. He he sells it as being both this everyman, but also someone worth saving. Like he's not a big jerk when they show up. You know, but at the same time, he also is just a guy. He's like, why am I special? He does have one scene where he tells a story about um, like his brothers back at home. which I thought he did a pretty good job of selling it. Like that's kind of his one acting moment throughout. Mm -hmm. um, I like that. But yeah, I just kind of like he's a guy. And this whole movie is focused on a guy. And that guy happens to be Matt Damon. Yeah. It's a good one. My number four is the 2013 biographical comedy slash drama uh, Behind the Candelabra. This is a HBO movie. I guess technically a TV movie. I don't think it ever came out in theaters. Does that make it a TV movie? I would say so. I think I mean, it, was, is, it was originally is shot it, to be theatrically released, and then it, HBO bought it because nobody else wanted to pay for it, I believe. <laughs> Is like Instigators our new equivalent of a TV movie? I don't know. Are streaming movies considered TV movies or are they just movies that happen to be streaming first? I mean, I, I know TV movie used to mean cheap or lower budget. Right. Which right. is kind of how like, I feel about the Instigators. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But like, I mean, you've, you've had um, some, I mean, I, I know Killers of the Flower Moon got a release, but like that was definitely for a streamer. Napoleon had a small release that was for a streamer so sure th that line's getting blurrier for sure uh and i think behind the candelabra as a movie from 2013 was one of the first to kind of make it really blurry for me because i could totally see this getting a theatrical release as kind of a, a small indie drama type thing um it stars uh matt damon as liberace the famous flamboyant pianist from the 60s 70s 80s or so um yeah. and kind of his life and his relationship with um his assistant i think he was rob Lowe. um and uh it was it was really good like if you want to see matt damon kind of stretch what he can do with just words on a screen and uh fellow actors to bounce stuff off of like behind the candelabra is not a, a flashy movie despite the fact that it's about a person who presents a flashy lifestyle. Um, and it kind of gave, at least to me, life to somebody who I saw kind of from a, the perspective of a caricature, right? The, my only perception of Liberace is the clips I've seen of him on variety shows and at awards shows and stuff like that. And so to get a little bit of his backstory, I don't know how faithful it is, but as presented in this movie, um, really humanized the person for me. And I thought everybody in the movie does a good job. Uh, if you like Soderbergh movies, you should see this one if you haven't, because it's, it's, um, it's a good one of his for sure. Check it out. Just a yeah. quick correction. Mm -hmm. He doesn't play Michael Liberace. Douglas paid Liberace. Right. Right. Matt Damon yeah. played the assistant. Yeah. Yep. Adam backwards. I heard you say Rob Lowe at some point in there too. He's right. in there. Oh, he's in there? Okay. Yeah. I thought James was just like having word salad with actors. <laughs> no, I was <laughs> like, it's okay. You just let him talk. And then Scott Bakula. <laughs> I was definitely mixing up the performances. That's what he is in that. For sure. We all do it. Uh, regardless, check it out. Zach? My number four is Jason Bourne in the Bourne franchise. Uh, he plays a very good Jason Bourne. For sure. There's like you know, there's these famous franchises of like the spy kind of thing. There's the James Bond, there's the Ethan Hunt, and uh, and Jason Bourne is like the 
quiet, introverted, get it done kind of bruiser guy. And he's so good at it. I really, I don't want to picture anyone else as Jason Bourne, I think, than Matt Damon. Neither does anybody else. They tried it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) He's really good at that role. And uh, I like a lot. And it's a very physical role, too. And he does a great job. Yeah, it's interesting hearing him talk about when he made Jason Bourne, the fourth one, Mm -hmm. which he did like 10 years later. And he was just saying, like, how much easier it was to play that character in his 30s versus in his 40s. It's just it's yeah. funny. Do you think he'll it's do another one before he bows out? No. No? Mm-hmm. Uh, I wouldn't say there's a 25% chance that there'll be, we'll get one more Bourne movie. Tom Cruise is still doing it. Uh, I, I mean, Tom, I, Tom Cruise is a unique person <laughs> in of himself. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know if uh, if Matt Damon has a, the level of uh, fervent, devi- fervent, 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 whatever dedication that uh, that that uh, Tom Cruise has. So. Sure, yeah, maybe not. I think if the money was right, seems like he'd do anything. True. <laughs> really, I mean, Instigator is not total garbage, but come on. Here's the, no no here's the thing. You're implying that he did it just to get paid. I think he had fun with his friends and got paid. Exactly. I think that's much a, a very big part of it. He's hanging out with Casey Affleck. Sure. He's hanging out with Doug Lyman. They're in Boston. They're having a good time. And they're getting paid. Sure, absolutely. He could easily so hang out with together. Doug Lyman and Casey Affleck and not get paid. No, they're too busy. He'd rather get paid and do it. <laughs> they're busy. You got to you got to schedule things. I don't know. You you guys weren't laughing in the movie when Matt Damon was talking about how he's gonna like quickly open and close the back of the the uh, armored car. He's like, "Let's give no. a quick whoosh whoosh." <laughs> like I, no. I was cracking up during that whole that whole sequence. The only thing in that movie that made me laugh was when they went back in the kitchen, or when they first broke into the kitchen, and there was like twenty five people in there, <laughs> yeah. and only three of them, and they're like. Uh, get on the floor and it was clear all these people didn't have to do that you know what I mean right but uh, yeah that's the only part that made me laugh not every time you went I have a gun no no okay didn't do, no, any, didn't do anything for me oh man all right well my number four is a movie that did nothing for me that's why I put it number four <laughs> now my number four is at least one person's number one maybe both of yours goodwill hunting okay uh matt damon plays the good sir mr will hunting himself uh he is a a genius who is working as a janitor at mit um and people find out that he is his genius and they're trying to figure out like why aren't you applying yourself i'm really simplifying this movie i'm sure you guys can go to it more um anyway he starts me with a therapist played by robin williams to kind of dig into what are his issues that are Holding him back is the best way to put it. And this movie really is a it's a two hander between um, Matt Damon, and Rob Williams. And just like they have these incredible therapy sessions together and they just it's, they go places. Both of them do. And I think it's a really strong acting performance from both of them. Um, as we were watching the instigators and they had uh, the character you didn't care for, Zach, the, the kind of the totally the, agree. He looked just like Rob Williams. Looked, right. And I was watching the movie thinking like, man, what if Rob Williams was like playing this mob boss like how great would have that have been? i thought the same thing so yeah 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 because it, it, it made me think back to them together goodwill hunting and um, it was odd how similar he looked to um robert williams character in goodwill hunting it was really weird yeah megan thought it was walking phoenix and i looked at the picture of the guy without facial hair and i see some walking phoenix resemblance also so okay. yeah maybe yeah my number four uh, again, another movie I've not seen. I watched this a bunch in college. Really liked it. Again, because it's got the Boston accents. <laughs> all warm and cozy for me. But have not revisited Goodwill Hunting in a while. You should do it. It's a good one. I should. James, this is when you need just that little bit of the uh, of the chorus from the AI song for Goodwill Hunting to come in. I just want you to have that on cue. <laughs> and every time we say Goodwill Hunting, I just want you to hit that button and Goodwill Hunting just comes in. Sure. Yeah. Why not? Um, okay, the number three is The Talented Mr. Ripley for me, uh, directed by Anthony Minghelia. 
I think. I don't know. Twidal Elijah Four. Uh, starring Matt Damon, Gwyneth Paltrow. Jude Law got an Oscar nomination for this movie. Do you guys remember that? He I do. He didn't win, but he got <laughs> Best Supporting Actor nomination. Um, yeah, I mean, this is um, this is Matt Damon, like, stretching in the early years of his career. I thought it was great. He's a bad guy. He's very devious. Not a dude I'd want in my life, for sure. Just kind of slowly takes over uh, these affluent people's existence and uh it's it's a great kind of pot boiling psychological thriller he really hasn't made too many of these since then and it's kind of a shame because he was good in that role my number three well my number number three is linus caldwell in oceans 11 and franchise that's a bingo um I really like this guy because he's kind of constantly being teased by George Clooney and Brad Pitt. And he's just like this eager guy who's like trying to like live up to his dad's legacy. And it just works to all of Matt Damon's strengths where he like can play a little bit of hapless, but also he's really talented at something and he's funny and he's like unconfident. And it's just like, it's just, he's really, really good in this as this character it's a really fun character for him to play and then later when he gets more confidence and he's like trying to talk to other characters like they're the new guy but he's still the new guy and yeah, it's just great i really enjoy it nice my number three is the last duel from 2021 in this movie matt damon plays a knight by the name of jean de carouge uh, and he, I should, I guess except for this movie is his wife played by Jodie Comer has accused Adam driver, who is his squire of rape. And Matt Damon has challenged Adam driver to a duel to settle this dispute. Um, and this movie is presented Rashomon style where you kind of get the same story from all three perspectives. So you get Matt Damon's perspective, Adam Driver's perspective, and then probably most importantly, Joni Comer's perspective. And so, I mean, already Matt Damon is kind of playing the same character, but in each story, he's, you know, reacting differently. Okay. So depending on sort of how people remember how he's handling that situation. So from him, you're kind of seeing him playing the same character three different ways. But even when he's kind of playing his own character, you see that, you know, at, uh, on one hand, he feels betrayed by his squire. He wants to defend his wife. He's also questioning, well, is his wife telling the truth or is she, you know, stretching something? So he's kind of doing this balancing act on who do I believe? And I just thought this was a, a surpri- not a surprising movie, um, but not a movie I expected to enjoy as much as I did. This actually ended up being my favorite movie of, I think, 2021, whatever, whatever year it came out. Um, and I think a lot of that has to do with the Matt Damon performance. All three of them are great, but just kind of how he's playing this conflicted character throughout, I found to be very interesting. It's a good one. I've only seen it once. I considered it for my list, but just didn't, uh, don't remember enough about him in it. And I'm sure rewatching it would just refresh my memory. So it's, it's a good one though. My number two, also a good one. Some would say a classic from 1997, Goodwill Hunting which Kyle already mentioned. Uh, This is another movie directed by Gus Van Sant. This and Jerry are both um, Gus Van Sant, Matt Damon joints. And uh, just a a great movie. Good heartwarming, heartwarming, heartwarming. Uh, Heartwarming? Heartwarming. (laughs) Uh, Heartwarming story uh, about bros and wanting the best for your bros. And story about mem- mentorship, I'd say on some level, and uh, male emotions, <laughs> male emotions. I don't know emotions expressed by males, uh, complicated male relationships, uh, especially in this specific time period and area of the world. And uh, yeah, just kind of a classic of '90s indie dramas. Goodwill hunting. Nice. All right. Well, my number two is Private Ryan and Saving Private Ryan. That's a uh, bingo. Again, he did a great performance, exactly what this movie needed him to be. I feel like Matt Damon is an actor that you can turn to 
and he will give you exactly what the movie requires him to do. Um, he'll just it's like a flawless performance for that character. You know what I mean? Even though it's a kind of a smaller character, it I don't think it could have been done better. It could have been matched maybe by someone else, but I don't think it could have been better. Mm-hmm. And um, I think it's yeah, it was great. Nice. Yeah, good pick. Bingo. Uh, my number two, Jason Bourne from the Bourne series. Uh, we talked a lot about this. A this uh, bingo. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> We've discussed this series a lot already. Um, I think that. Matt Damon brings a lot of physicality to, to this performance. Um, it is a very physical performance with the fighting styles, with the stunts, and his presence um, makes it feel all very real and grounded. And I think that is a big bonus for this movie. I also really love kind of the first time he realizes who he is, or not maybe not realize who he is, the first time he realizes he has his these abilities, and when he's sleeping on the park bench, and some like cops come to wake him up, and all of a sudden he like, disarms one of them and sort of looks at his own hands like what am i doing and it's kind of like that movie that moment upgrade where this guy is doing things he can't believe he can do and i think jay you know matt damon sells that so well in that first scene where he's just dispatches these two police officers so quickly but then has no idea why he can do it and how he knows those skills nice uh my favorite matt damon movie and again i kind of ranked them by like how much i remember it as a matt damon movie because certainly saving private ryan i like more than this movie a couple others i like more than this movie but when i think about this movie i think about matt damon despite the fact that there are a lot of great actors in this movie but he really uh brings the movie home we're talking about the martian from ridley scott um yeah he plays a astronaut who's on Mars and has to figure out how to survive on Mars. And, uh, the movie, if for my money hinges on you believing him and his, uh, figuring things out, his frustrations, his victories, his losses, and going along for the ride with him as he, uh, acts out all these different scenarios of, you know, space survival on some level. Uh, but there's like, it's kind of a who's who at the time of actors in this movie. Like Jessica Chastain is in it and um, Michael Pena. I'm going to run on the list. Jeff Daniels, Kristen Wiig, Kate Mara, Benedict Wong, Donald Glover. This guy. Schweidel, Elijah four. Lots of, <laughs> lots, of, lots of people in this movie. And yet when I think of the Martian, I think of Matt Damon. There's like, I couldn't. I couldn't have listed you all those people off the top of my head. Maybe a couple of them, but certainly. Well, he is the Martian, right? For sure, he's definitely the main character, uh, and they just stacked the cast um, as like the supporting cast. But um, but I think the fact that you are happy to go through what this guy goes through with Matt Damon kind of as your uh, your guide, um, experience the emotions through him. Uh, I just think it's one of his best performances, even if it is kind of understated. Like it's not as big a performance as the talented Mr. Ripley for sure. But um, I think we've all said it at one time while we talk about this list. Like he's, he's just a very stable actor, (laughs) I would say. And whatever the script asks of him, he does it. And when the things surrounding that script are great, then he's always good in it or great in it. So my number one, the Martian. Nice. Do you know the guy who wrote the story, The Martian, um, Andy Weir? Mm-hmm. Uh, his next book is also being turned into a movie called Project Hail Mary. Yes. And it's starring Ryan Gosling, and it's being directed by Phil Lord and Christopher Miller. Oh, I didn't know Lauren Miller directing it. Yeah. Is I'm it, really interested to see how they it, translate that to screen. Right. And it's written by the guy who wrote Cabin in the Woods. The screenplay. The screenplay. Okay. Yeah. So I think yeah. it's going to be another winner. Wait, who wrote Cabin in the Woods? Drew Goddard? Yeah. Oh, he also wrote The Martian. The Martian. Oh, okay. Oh, interesting. Great. Okay. So it's also the guy who wrote The Martian. Yep. Yeah. So I think it's I think I think it's going to be awesome. Don't forget, he's because, also because... the guy that wrote The Cloverfield Paradox, which was not good. That's that's, that's the best one of all of them. <laughs> no, it's not. 
<laughs> was that the one that came out at, right after the Super Bowl? Yes. Oh, I'm thinking 10 Cloverfield Lane. That's the best one of all. No, no, no. It's the one that uh, nobody wanted to release. And so Netflix bought it for almost nothing and dumped it after the Super Bowl. That's right. Yeah. It was an event. I, um, But anyway, so I'm looking forward to that. I think Ryan Gosling is good casting for that. Yeah. That's all I really need for that movie is Ryan Gosling. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> no, no one else is at this point. So. Uh, my number one is Will Hunting from Good Will Hunting. I I love this movie. I'm obsessed with this movie. It it's a movie that jumps between my number one and number two back and forth all the time. Uh, favorite movie of all time. Uh, it's it's a perfect film. I I love everything about it. His performance is incredible. Um, very effective. Uh, you know he. He helped write the script, so I think he had a lot of time to like practice with it. Um, but he just does such a, a nuanced, good job for such a young actor. And I'm really impressed. And he has to be, you know, across from Robin Williams and hold his own. And it's just a really good performance and uh, pretty awesome. And it's a great way to start it. Man, to start your career with, I mean, he had other movies too, but like, um, you know, big movies like Goodwill Hunting and Saving Private Ryan to like begin your career with and then move into the like the oceans movies and the born movies. And I really, you know, he's, he's famous for a reason after all those movies and he can kind of write his blank check to do whatever he wants. And then he picks movies to do like behind the candelabra, you know, just like whatever he wants to yeah. do um, is interesting. So yeah, good old hunting. Definitely my number one. That's a bingo. <laughs> I mean, he and Ben Affleck definitely made their own luck with goodwill hunting. Uh, my number one, same as James, aforementioned The Martian. I don't have a ton to add to this. I think you guys really hit it on the head. Um, but I will say that I think Matt Damon's plays it very a very human performance, which means I, this is a believable person who's in this situation. They're not a scientific robot or, you know, they're not like, oh, I'm, I'm only focused on this. Like, you believe that this is an actual human who is trapped in this situation and dealing with all these human emotions as they go through it. Um, and on top of that, when I read The Martian, I read it before I saw the movie. So I read the book, and as I was watching the movie, I was like, yeah, Matt Damon is playing this character exactly how I imagined it in the book and really, I think, translated it perfectly from page to screen. So when I think of uh, when I think of The Martian, obviously, is a Matt Damon movie, but this is one of my favorite Matt Damon movies and definitely my favorite Matt Damon performance. That's a bingo. <laughs> All right. What do we have? Four movies that crossed? I think all four of our lists. Yeah, the only one I left off that you guys both mentioned was Townsend, Mr. Ripley. I just, it's been so long since I'd seen it. I didn't feel like I could really talk about it. Uh, you should check it out. Rewatch. Oh, yeah, it. it's worth a rewatch. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely worth a rewatch. That was our top 10 Matt Damon performances. We're going to move on to a quick little Cinerealis movie quiz. Uh, this is a quiz we've taken before, one that I wrote uh, quite a long time ago. <laughs> this was uh, first taken, this quiz was first taken by Zach back in 2016. So I broke it out. I updated some of the questions because that was eight years ago. And so some things had changed. Some questions were no longer valid. It's been updated. It's the 2024 edition of the Matt Damon quiz. Zach versus Kyle. We're going to get into it and play a game. You guys ready? Yeah. This yeah. quiz is 12 questions. There's lots of opportunities for bonus points. We're just going to bounce back and forth with whoever can give the first answer. We're going to start with Kyle since he's never taken this quiz before. We'll, okay. we'll see how much Zach remembers from taking it eight years ago. Kyle, true or false? Matt Damon dropped out of Harvard to pursue his acting career. Oh, you mean Harvard? <laughs> sure. Uh, let's say true. You're going to say true? yeah that's true you're right well i mean he got an english degree from harvard 
Sure, but he dropped out and then went back, from what I understand. <laughs> okay, he dropped out to per- it didn't say he's not a college graduate, right? Did he drop out to pursue his acting career? The answer is, do yes. you really drop out if you like temporarily suspend? Yeah, you drop out. You were on track to continue your schooling. You drop out, and then you later on you make a choice to go back. You drop back. You in. still dropped okay. out. Okay. Uh, for bonus points, we'll go with Zach's first answer on this one. How many credits short of graduating was he? <laughs> closest to the this pin. Closest he to the was, pin. He was only twelve credits short from graduating. Zach says twelve. Kyle. Oh, I think he was uh, eight credits short of graduating. Zach got it right on the nose. 12 credits. Was that a total guess or you're remembering this from eight years ago? <laughs> total guess. Because <laughs> right. that was one that didn't change. <laughs> 12 credits. That's like a semester right there. Yeah. No wonder he yeah, went back. It's a back. light semester, but you know. Zach, question two. Which director has Matt Damon collaborated with the most? Which director has Matt Damon collaborated with the most? That's a great question. Um, uh, Doug Lyman. Your answer is Doug Lyman. No, not Doug Lyman. Nope. Mm. Kyle. This is your I'm chance. kind of feeling Paul Greengrass. Kyle's guessing Paul Greengrass. Yeah. No. You're both wrong. Okay. It was Steven Soderbergh. Oh, for Three Oceans plus... Oh, No Sudden Move. He's in No Sudden Move, isn't he? Yeah, okay. Yeah. I don't believe he's in No Sudden Move. When I was looking at Matt Damon movies, he popped up on Letterboxd as being in that. He might be a voice on the phone. Well, that's Is that what it was? isn't it? I don't know. I don't <laughs> Maybe know. that was. Kind of ruins the bonus points for this question, though, because Zach... I'm going to ask you to list <laughs> movies of Steven Soderbergh and Matt Damon, not including <laughs> No Way Out. No Sudden Move. No Sudden Move. <laughs> <laughs> Steven Soderbergh movies? Yep. If you get one, Kyle can na- name the next one. We'll bounce. Oh. oh okay. Ocean's 11. Correct. Kyle? Ocean's 12. Correct. Zach? Ocean's 13. All right. Kyle? Contagion. Correct. Oh. Zach? Behind the Candelabra. Correct. Oh, that was Soderbergh? Oh, no. I thought I, I really thought I had the uh, the death knell with Contagion. Kyle, there's two more that I know of. Uh, it's Logan not Lucky. a tumor. What'd you say? Logan Lucky. No. Okay. Zach? Um... I'm not going to think of another one. All right. Kyle, you want one more shot or are you done? Another Matt Damon, Steven Soderbergh. That's not no sudden move. Mm-hmm. Side effects. No, he's not in that. The two you guys missed at the informant exclamation point. Oh, right. Yeah. Never seen it. Okay. And unsane from 2018, the iPhone movie. Which is like the iPhone movie? It's a great movie. You haven't seen Unsane? No. Oh, you should check out Unsane. He made it on an Never iPhone. Steven Soderbergh made it on an iPhone. Oh, I thought it was about iPhones. No, no. He made it oh. on an iPhone. You know how he's like and trying to. Damon's in it? Uh, he, yes. Very briefly. But. Uh, okay. Is it longer than a All phone right. call? Uh, yes. He, okay. he appears on camera. Okay. In Unsane. All right, we are moving to Kyle for question number. Hold on, how is that scored, by the way? Uh, Do we get a point for every Soderbergh? All points are worth the same amount. If you get one right, I'm giving you a point. Okay. Uh, Kyle? Yeah. How many movies has Matt Damon starred in where the title contains some part of his character's name in that movie? I was, so I was actually thinking about this while we made the list. Closest to the pin. So oh. Zach's going to get a guess as well. Okay. All right. We're, wait, we're looking, his character's name? I'm looking for a number. Yes. The criteria is Matt Damon's character's name is a part of the title. Or the whole title. It has to be his character's name, not a role he plays. Not a, it's, not a nickname. 
It's his character. I don't know what you're talking about. The name he goes by in the movie. <laughs> okay, okay. Is the name like, in the title. Like, like he is the Martian, but that's not his name, so that doesn't count. Right. Correct. Yes. Okay, that's yeah. what I want to know. All right. Obviously. <laughs> well, I, we also were saying that he's the Martian. So. They don't call okay. him the Martian. It's not his name. Okay. That's what the fair, movie's fair, about. Fair. A Martian. I'm looking for a number, Kyle. Okay. I'm going to go 10. Kyle says 10. Zach? I counted eight up in my head. Uh, so to hedge, I'll say nine. Zach's going to say nine. And the answer is nine. Oh, Zach I got it right on. I went button. one over. I, I thought there was maybe something I didn't think about. Oh, good. Nice job. That's okay, Kyle. You can make it up by. What? Can you, can you let me know what they are? There's the boys. Da, 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 da. Okay. <laughs> Kyle, <laughs> would you like to tell me the name of one of these nine movies? Yes, The Born Identity. The Born Identity. Zach. The Born Supremacy. Yes, Kyle. The Born Ultimatum. Yes, Zach. Jason Bourne. Yes, Kyle. Goodwill Hunting. Yes, Zach. Talented Mr. Ripley. Yes, Kyle. Saving Private Ryan. Yes, Zach. Yeah. What, okay. Hold on. Give me a second, because I had this. There's two more. Four. Yeah. When I was. Yeah. It's not a tumor. When I was counting up. It's not a tumor. I thought of one. Oh, Jerry. Oh shoot. Okay. Jerry. Kyle. There's one more. There's two more. I had it. Oh, I had it wrong. Okay. <laughs> and it's not. We were. I said Jerry. Mm-hmm. Um. Oh, no. It's stuck on you. They don't have to say their names in it. <laughs> yeah, their names aren't stuck in you. <laughs> stuck in you, yeah. Um, Invictus. <laughs> <laughs> no. Is he in that? Okay. Zach? He's, he's in that, though, right? Sure. It's just nobody's okay. named Invictus. I thought maybe his name was Invictus, like no. Rudy. No. Okay. Zach? No idea. No idea. You guys both. Oh wait, wait, up? wait, wait! Can I do one more? Yeah. Can I say Green Zone? Which do you think his name? His name is Green, green maybe, or it, Zone? It, <laughs> maybe, like, maybe it's a double meaning. Like he's in the Green Zone, but also no. his name is Green. No. Okay. The right. two you guys missed were the brothers Grimm. Oh, last name yeah. Grimm. Yeah. Well done. And Spirit colon Stallion of the Cimarron. He was the voice of the horse. I don't know. <laughs> somehow <laughs> <laughs> somehow his character's name is in that title okay nice uh number four back to what kyle here zach back, back to zach back to zach me zach true or false matt damon and ben affleck are best friends both bostonians and also cousins false you say false easy point for kyle that's true they're cousins. Well, he has an answer. He didn't answer true. He doesn't matter. He only has one answer. <laughs> uh, he didn't even answer and he gets the point. I'd yeah. like to say true, James. <laughs> well, yeah, James go. told you the answer. <laughs> what do you mean they're cousins? All right. Closest to the pin. I mean, hold on. Hold closest on, hold on. to the pin. Follow up. Cousins. Follow up. <laughs> like, closest how, how to the wait, pin. How in they? the world are they cousins, <laughs> no, I think this is the closest question. Closest to the pin. Zach, you get to go first. How many removed... <laughs> Once removed, are they as cousins? <laughs> hold on. No, no, no. Hold on. If you accept a- any amount of removed as a cousin, then we're all cousins. We're all Everyone's cousins. a cousin. Hey, yes. I asked you a true or false question. You're the one that got it wrong, not me. I would say <laughs> a, like a, a second cousin, third removed is not a cousin. Well, I just said it right there. Second cousin, third removed. I'm, yes, a cousin. A second cousin. I'm looking That's for how many removed they are. How many removed? How are many they? once removed they are? They're two once removed. Kyle, closest to the pin. Thrice. Kyle says three. <laughs> the answer is tenth. Tenth. Okay. I was looking for tenth. <laughs> That's, so That's not even. Kyle gets the point. Hold on. Also, also, they're not best friends. Sure they are. Yeah, they are. No. They would say not. they're best Show- friends. 
No, they wouldn't. Show me one source online. Did you gather this online that they're no, best friends or did you just make this up? Matt Damon said this in an, uh, he was on Smartless or something. And he was talking about like him and Ben Affleck growing up mm-hmm. and like being buddies and playing together, being at, like being in high school yeah, plays together. They were friends for sure. Buddies. They're best friends. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Th- then you said false. Who is his best friend then? Right. I, I don't feel comfortable saying that. Right <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Casey, his buddy's younger brother of five years. He's been in more movies with Casey Affleck. Yeah, yeah. He, guess he can boss Casey around. He's five years older than him. <laughs> he can boss that Ben Affleck. That's why around. I get to boss you guys around. <laughs> um, okay. Quiet, James. Who's next? I don't remember who answered first. <laughs> I'm Kyle. Time. Okay. Kyle. Kyle, number five. Matt Damon did two things to prepare for his role in 1999's The Talented Nail both. Mr. Ripley. Which of these three did he not do? Okay. Okay. He did two things. Two of these things he did. One of them he didn't do. Okay. All right. Did he lose 30 pounds? Okay. Did he hire a dialect coach to lose his Boston accent? Okay. Or did he learn to play the piano? He did two of those things specifically for Talented Mr. Ripley. And one of them I made up. I don't think he lost 30 pounds, and that's because in Courage Under Fire, he plays a heroin addict who's already pretty skinny. So I think he just kept that whole heroin body (laughs) and brought it into Talented Mr. Ripley. All right. Fair enough answer. I'm not going to say. I'm going to give Zach a shot at this one as well. Piano. Zach says... He didn't learn to play the piano. And Kyle no. says he didn't lose 30 pounds because he already lost it or something You're like right, that. You're right, exactly. Right. <laughs> he lost it for the previous movie. The answer is? No. You're both wrong. Uh, he didn't hire a <laughs> dialect coach. I made that up. <laughs> All right, number six. I'm looking it up. <laughs> <laughs> that, he, he definitely learned to play piano and lost 30 pounds for that role. Uh, there, there was a moment in, uh, the instigators where Matt Damon said something mm-hmm. and he pronounced an R like he forgot to do his Boston accent. I was like, Oh Matt, sure. Disappointed right there. Well, he like, hasn't used it a whole lot lately. So. I know. I know. I was just like, Oh, we, we, we forgot it there for a second. I heard an there R. is a dialect coach in the, um, cat or in the crew of talented Mr. Ripley. Yes. Yeah, for Jude law or Gwyneth Paltrow <laughs> for Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah. That and did he hire it or did the studio? Um, all <laughs> oh, right, number. <laughs> I don't know. Oh wow, Zach, number six. Which of these actresses did Matt Damon not date before getting married in two thousand five to his current wife? To his to his best friend, current wife. Uh, no. Ben Affleck. They got married. Did he not date Minnie Driver? Did he not date Winona Ryder? Mini Driver and Winona Ryder, or did he not date Penelope Cruz? He didn't date Winona Ryder. Kyle, I'm going to give you a shot at this as well. Do you agree with Zach, or are you going to go with somebody else? I know he dated Mini Driver. Okay. You I'm going to agree with Zach, Winona Ryder. You both think he did not date Winona Ryder, but he did date Mini Driver and Penelope Cruz. Yes. No. Wrong again. He a hundred percent did not date Penelope Cruz. <laughs> okay. Not doing too hot. Sure guys. About that. You're sure about I, that. According to the internet. I don't keep track of celebrity love life. Unlike you, James. You're right. I keep track of these things. I have a whole spreadsheet. I know, you're on, I have a spreadsheet. I know TMZ is your, your first it's book. It's my book. homepage. You wake up. Yep. TMZ. First thing you check. For sure. Um, we are back to Zach or Kyle. Back to, back to Kyle. Kyle. Kyle with number seven. We all know Matt Damon famously won a best screenplay Oscar with Ben Affleck in 1997 for Goodwill Hunting, but he has also been no- nominated three other times. Name one for screenplay or just other than his screenplay win. He has been nominated three other times for an Oscar. For an Oscar, what for okay. and for what movie? Um, I'm going to say best actor for The Martian. 
No. Zach? Name me any of the other three times. Oppenheimer. No. For what for? Yeah, what for? Yeah. The movie Oppenheimer. Supporting <laughs> producer. Okay. He didn't get an Oscar nomination for that. Can I make another guess? Yeah, we'll we'll go until you guys are done with okay. this. <laughs> uh acting for departed. No. Zach. You guys are just guessing at this point. I, I think we're making good guesses though. They're okay, educated have, guesses right now. I have a good one now. Yes. Once you start throwing out Euro trip though, I'm calling it. Okay, what was the question? The question is, Matt Damon and Ben Affleck won for best screenplay for Good Will Hunting. But Matt Damon has been nominated without winning three other times. Name okay, what I'll, for and what movie? I'll say Good Will Hunting, best actor. That's correct. Yeah, that was a good guess. Yep. Kyle? Um, I'm going to go there's two more. Talented, talented Mr. Ripley acting. No. Nope, just Jude Law got the nom on that one. Okay. Zach? Uh, I forget the exact name. I'm thinking it's called Stillwater, and I'll no. say acting for Stillwater. No. Mm. Kyle? Wait, why, why do we keep going? I got one. We're just going to go until, <laughs> until you guys are every done Matt with Damon it. movie. We're done with it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could give you, I'll give you each two more. It's not a two more. Okay. okay. Um, two more guesses. One of them you'll Two never get, guesses. but one of them you could. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna say he was a producer on okay. Spirit. No. No. I mean, he might best have been best supporting so. actor. Best supporting actor, True Grit. No. Kyle, last guess. Okay. Yeah. Um, he did a documentary about no. not Zach. Cl- okay. <laughs> best actor, Last Duel. No. Okay. What is it? The two you guys missed. Best supporting actor. In the movie named after him, Invictus. <laughs> he got okay. he got a best supporting oh. nomination for Invictus. I, I didn't All realize right. I was about him. And also the one you would never get, he was nominated for Best Picture as a producer on the 2016 Kenneth Lonergan drama What? I'll give you a point for this if you can tell me this movie. He was a producer on a movie that got a Best Picture nomination. In, in 2016, 2016, a drama. In 2016. And Kenneth Lagerman's the director? Yep. Oh, yes. Whoever says it first yeah. gets the point. I don't know who that is. You don't know who Kenneth Lonergan is? I don't know who it no. is either. You will when I say the name. Okay. The name of the it's movie? Not Green Zone. You give up? Green, not Green Zone. Uh, green Book. <laughs> no, it's not. Green. Oceans 8. Nope. The name of the movie? Manchester by the Sea. Oh, his best friend Casey. Yep, yep. You guys, you guys got one point in that one. Long question for one point because he owns Casey now. That's why. All right, uh, back to Zach. Number eight. Matt Damon has starred in two movies with actress Julia Roberts. The second was 2001's Ocean's Eleven, and the first was what 1998 film? 1998 film with. Julia? No, sorry. 1988. Check film. check that year. 1988. I read it wrong. The first uh, was what 1988 film that they were both in? I cannot think of a Julia Roberts movie from 1988 that I would think he is in. Okay. So I'll just say Pretty Woman. No. Kyle? Mystic Pizza, which takes place in Mystic, Connecticut. Been there. That's correct. I feel like I've these coasts one at I feel like Kyle actually knew that. It wasn't a guess. I did know that. Yeah. I knew that. Yeah. Good job. I was, was that trying, good? Mystic Pizza? Yeah. yeah. It was fine. It wasn't that great. <laughs> okay. there, there's better pizza in Connecticut. Matt Damon has one no, the movie. Has one line in that. Oh, I've movie. never seen the movie. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought about the pizza. <laughs> Yeah, the, this is a pizza podcast. You could see how he would assume you were talking about the pizza. Oh, Pepe's in New Haven? <laughs> Maybe the best pizza I've ever had. I'm, sure. I'm going to say, no. oh, have you had New England pizza before? Have I had New England sorry, pizza? Like, sorry, New, New Haven, Haven pizza? New Haven pizza before. <laughs> no. Oh. What's New Haven pizza? So it's it's like a thin cracker crust, and you've got <laughs> toppings like out to the edge. It's so good. 
They have like clam pizza, a, like seafood pizza. Is that even pizza? pizza? It sounds like a cracker with toppings. No, no, it's not a literal cracker crust. I'm saying it's like a thinner crust. It's got a little snap to it. It's not like a soggy crust. So the best pizza you've ever had was a thin crust? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, Pepe's in New Haven. All right. I'm, I'm looking up at their pizza, but I'm just shocked. Okay. Yeah, look up Pepe's. All right, I think Zach is not next. Kyle is next, right? Yeah. Yep. All right, here we go, Kyle. Matt Damon auditioned for 1996's Primal Fear, but another actor won the role. Damon went on to star in a poker-centric film with that same (laughs) actor in 1998. I I can name the actor if that's what I want to do. Name the film and the actor. Wait, what? Okay, so the the actor's Edward Norton. Okay. And then is the, the film Rounders? You want the poker movie? That's correct. Okay, I wasn't sure what you're asking me. Name the actor and the film. That's what I was asking. Okay. Yeah. Zach, true or false? Matt Damon was once offered the chance at playing Daredevil, a role that eventually went to his best friend Ben Affleck. Zach's going to say false because they're not best friends. (laughs) They are best friends. (laughs) Assuming they are best friends, Zach, is this a true or false statement? True. You say true. Yeah. That's correct. Uh, The Matt Damon Daredevil movie was written by Kevin Smith and was supposed to be directed by Robert Rodriguez. Never happened. Unfortunately, I wish I could have seen that. All right. Kyle, are you ready for your final question? I am. How many nonfiction roles has Matt Damon starred in? How many nonfiction roles has Matt Damon starred in? I'm going to give you the first closest to the pin number. Can you define a nonfiction role? You mean he played a real person? Yeah, he played a real person that existed. No, No, but like in a fictional movie... He may have been in a fictional movie, but his character was a real person, meaning right, like right, but, existed on the earth at one point. Okay, but not you're not talking about like a documentary. You're talking about a, a narrative film mm-hmm. okay. where his character was a real person at one not time. Not a yeah. You don't you don't count uh, Project Greenlight just because he was in it and he's a real person. He's playing another person in a movie. I wish I could talk through this out loud, but I know Zach then gets a guess as well so i kind of right. keep it to myself so I, I have that one i have that <laughs> one i have that one i'm gonna go that one i'm gonna go five i think that's low but i'm not sure yeah i was saying five. i counted five and i'm sure there's someone missing so i'll say six okay zach's sure there's some he's missing so he's going six yep kyle's going five the answer is five Oh, Kyle got it. Oh, okay. Wow. I'm just gonna make his name up. So keep him to yourself, Zach. So Kyle won. So we'll give him first shot at naming one of the five. Uh, good old Invictus. No. He doesn't play. He doesn't play real person Invictus. His character was made up in Invictus. Oh yeah, yeah. Wow. No. Um, I'll say uh, uh, the last duel. Yes. Um, I believe the informant is a real story the, or based on a real person. The informant is based on a real story, but the character he's played, he plays, is not a real person. Wow. I got so lucky with my guess of five. <laughs> <laughs> Zach. All right. Well, uh, Ford v. Ferrari. Oh, no. Kyle? Um, oh, op- yeah. The, the general from Oppenheimer. Correct. Zach. Air. Yes. One yeah, I'm, more. I'm really, I'm really out of guesses now. One because, more. This oh. movie was talked about in our top tens. Okay. Jason Bourne is not real. The Martian isn't real. <laughs> Goodwill Hunting is not real. Jason Bourne is <laughs> not real. Uh, right, oh, yeah, yeah, five yeah. Seconds. The, the, the Angel Loki of Dogma. And don't say that's not real or else Zach's no. got a bone to pick with you. Not, not real. 
Lo- Zach? Lo- wasn't Loki like a Norse god of mischief? I don't know. Oh, but, no, I'm just, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but uh, I'm not sure why a biblical movie's got an, a, an angel named Loki in it. Zach, there's one um, more. I'm, I think you can get I'm this. Curious if uh, Saving Private Ryan was based on a real person. That's your answer? Yeah. No. No. It's based on a real person, but I don't believe it's. It's based on like a legend. I don't think it's based on a. It's based on the Sullivan twin or the Sullivan right. kids. Exactly. Well, yeah. And which they, I think the reference in the movie, the Sullivans. Right. Um, the ones you guys didn't get was Behind the Candelabra. Oh. How you didn't get that? We talked yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah. We did. Oh, you talked about it. All right. Uh, last. I wonder if we bought a zoo is based on a real thing. <laughs> I don't believe so. Bought a zoo. But I might be wrong. About- what about stuck on you? Just based on the idea of Again, the Siamese. Some things. of these characters that he's played were stories that were about real people, but they've changed everything. So he's no longer playing a real person. If that makes sense. We yeah. bought a zoo mm-hmm. is based on a 2008 memoir of the same name by Benjamin Me. Mm-hmm. What is the, the plot of the movie? Benjamin Me is grieving the loss of his wife Catherine. I think it's based off a real guy. I don't know. I'm running. Yeah, I, I think I think scores have been locked in on this one. Sorry, Zach. <laughs> Final question. Ready? <laughs> Please don't Jordan Childs the situation. <laughs> Final question. Zach. I was within a minute. This is yeah, you, you had one minute to log your log your complaints and it's been a minute. I four, did. So I did. I did. This is closest yeah. to the pin. You get the first guess. How many films has Matt Damon appeared in that starts? With the word the. How many movies has Matt Damon starred in that starts with the word the? Uh, easy. Okay. Ten. Zach is guessing ten. Kyle? Oh. See, I got to seven. <laughs> so I was really hoping Zach could go lower. Uh, I mean, the is such a common way to start a movie and he's been in like 70 odd movies i'm gonna go 11 i'm gonna go one higher kyle's gonna box zach out on the higher numbers we've, yep, we've got yep. a 10 and an 11 the answer is 20 kyle gets okay. the point <laughs> okay all right <laughs> all right kyle you get first shot name a movie the informant the informant correct zach the Departed. The Departed. Correct. Kyle? The Talented Mr. Ripley. Talented Mr. Ripley. Correct. He's like looking it up. No, I'm not looking at it. <laughs> no, James is. Oh, James I'm is marking the points. <laughs> <laughs> the Martian. The Martian. Correct. The Last Duel. Correct. The Born Identity. Correct. The Born Supremacy. Correct. Um. Uh, well, he doesn't know the, the last born ultimatum. Okay. <laughs> Correct. The Brothers Grimm. Correct. Ooh, nice. Very nice. We're supposed to have forgotten about that movie. Right. Yeah. The Adjustment Bureau. Correct. Oh, good one. Good one. Um. <laughs> the Avengers: Colon Endgame. <laughs> no. No. Zach. <sighs> There's a lot left. Oh, I know. I know. It's got to, it's, you know, got to think of them on top of my head. Here. The Great Wall. There's Ooh. 10 left. Now nine because that is That's correct. That's a good guess. You guys are barely halfway there. I know. <laughs> And I'm running out. But you've got so you've got the majors. I know. And this this is where like Zach's knowledge can start to take over here. Yeah. Because... I mean, one of them's super easy. Should be very obvious, but yeah. The goodwill hunting. <laughs> no, not the goodwill hunting. Kyle. The... I'm gonna give you a couple seconds and then we're gonna yeah. move it to Zach. Yep, go ahead. Go to Zach. Okay, yep. Zach. I can't remember if it's called Monuments Men or The Monuments Men. Is that your guess? So I'm that'll be my guess, The Monuments Men. 
correct? Yeah. Um, let's say the Oceans trilogy. No. <laughs> Zach. <laughs> I think I I think I can't think of any more. All right. Are we both giving up? Yeah. Yeah, I can't think of any more. Okay. The ones you missed. Sorry, slip of the finger. <laughs> the good old boys. Don't know that movie. The Good okay. Shepherd. Oh, the Good yeah, Shepherd. Yeah, Good Shepherd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and the Rainmaker. The Legend of Bagger Vance. The le- yep. Okay. The Man Who Saved the World. The Rainmaker. Mm-hmm. The Third Wheel. Mm. The Zero Theorem. Oh, I've heard, I've heard of that. that. I didn't really I hear that. that. And the one I thought was pretty easy, The Instigators. Oh, oh I've already forgotten about that. <laughs> <I know>. Me <laughs> too. Okay, there was one bonus question, just in case you guys tie, all right? Okay. So this one doesn't really count unless we need it. According to the numbers, in bees, what is the lifetime gross total of the 37 films in which... The website, The Numbers, considers Matt Damon a lead in. Who guesses first? for a number in Bs. I'll guess first because I'm so terrible at this. Okay. So it it both won't help Zach at all, my guess, but it also will be laughable. Okay. Um, In Bs, 37 movies that he's the lead in. I mean, he hasn't done. I don't know how sure the the Bourne movies are making. He hasn't done like you know Avengers or Star Wars or anything like that. He wouldn't be the lead in those anyway. Exactly. So he's not making huge. I have no idea. Ten Bs. I have no clue. Kyle says ten I'm Bs. I'm so bad at guess. I'm so bad at guessing. Like that is too high. That is too. Okay, high. that's fine. I think he's gonna be closer to like six Bs. Zach says six. I will let you know. At the end, I'm going to score this. Talk amongst yourself. <laughs> what are you going to score? I'm going to I'm going to add all this up. Oh, you were keeping score too? You were keeping score? I always keep score. Every game for the past 10 years. All right, I, I, I want <laughs> I want both of your scores. <laughs> all right. So, well, Zach, how did you get to six Bs? Like, I'm, obviously, that's an estimate. But, like, why do you think 10 Bs is too high? Uh, 10 Bs is a very, very hard number to hit okay. because you need many multiple billion dollar franchises for that. Right. And those are not easy to come by. And he's, so, I'm, okay. So he has to grind his way up with the Oceans movies, the Bourne movies, those kind of things, right? Yeah. Because um, he's not in a ton of like runaway, you know, they earned a billion dollar movies. So if he's not like in a Marvel or something like that, he's not going to be in a lot of movies that like will add up. Yeah. All right. You guys ready? Yeah. I'm curious to know how well your score is versus my score. <laughs> I have too. too. Um, we didn't need the bonus question. The answer was 5.6 billion. Oh, Zach. Okay. So Zach was You're pretty right. close. You're I would say if, four off, if you were, if great, you were yeah. rounding up in B's, he got it pretty much. Nice job, Zach. Um, and the final scores, according to my tabulations, were 22 to Zach and 19 to Kyle. Um, does that include the bonus question? No. Okay. I had 21 to Zach and 19 to Kyle. Okay. So either I lost myself a point out of humility or James <laughs> gave me one. Um, I, I don't it. think I gave you an extra one. I think you probably missed one because... Okay. You didn't, it's not like we had a difference in Kyle's number. You know what I mean? Yes, so I think for one sure. just dropped off. Either I gave you an extra one or you dropped one off. Either way, same result. Good job, guys. Zach had a little bit of a advantage. Do you remember any of those questions from eight years ago, Zach? I don't. Okay. I definitely think this is a Kyle victory because I've heard this quiz before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wasn't expecting to win this. I was hoping just to you know, get close to your score. Be competitive. I'm I'm happy. I'm happy that, you know, it wasn't a runaway for Zach. So sure. Yeah. Nice. Good times. It's less that, uh, it's less that Zach, I think he's Zach more lost this than one. It's it's, uh, it's, it's a a pure victory for Zach. 
Matt Damon's best. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you asking? Chat GPT? <laughs> no, no, no. Google. Okay. So I still think dumb it's oh, speaking anyway. of Chat GPT, I have uh, a great question for the after show. Not to okay. not to tease the uh, non after show listeners, but okay. I, I I have a topic for sure. 